Welcome back. Remember the other day uh, when the president was uh, intimating that when he sits down with Kim Jong-un of North Korea, if he feels the talks aren't uh, being productive, he'll just walk, walk out. He'll, he'll up and leave. Uh, I don't know if there's a connection here, but lo and behold, out of nowhere, we get a sort of a pre-concession on the part of the North Koreans that they're fine with dropping a demand that U.S. troops be removed from South Korea. I think we have an excess of 50 thousand such troops there uh, to former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, James Cunningham, on what he makes of all of that and uh, the tension ahead of this big power whenever it comes. Ambassador, always good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you make uh, of this and the fact that the North Koreans, if we're to believe these reports and some dispute them, that they, that they don't have a precondition like that anymore, that if we have all those troops in South Korea, fine by them? Well, I wouldn't actually read that much into it. Um, I think it's pretty clear that Kim is trying to shape the stage for this, not just the discussion with, uh, with President Trump and with the United States, but with uh, South Korea and indeed with the region as a whole. And he's clearly trying to take some of the rough edges off of his image. Uh, it's a despicable regime. Um, he's trying to make it look more reasonable, a little bit uh, warmer. A little less demanding than uh, than it might have been in the past. When the when the actual discussions begin and the substance co comes up, I think it will be quite uh, quite difficult and a little bit different atmosphere. All right, uh, when Michael Pompeo was meeting with him, we don't know what you know broad parameters they agreed to to sort of set the stage for these talks, but. Um, you, you probably know how this stuff goes far, far better than I. Uh, Henry Kissinger kind of played that role with Mao Zedong ahead of Richard Nixon's uh, famous visit there. Um, are they similar? Or do, do they line up what they're going to talk about? Or, and what would be the issues you think would be batted around? Well, normally, uh, preparation for even agreeing to a summit meeting like this would entail some long and serious discussions about what the purpose and objectives and, and the paradigm for the meeting would be. That didn't take place in this case. I think it's a good thing that Director Pompeo has begun or carried out a uh, discussion of how to prepare a meeting. And normally you would have and you would develop an agenda. Uh, they, the other side would have things that they would want to discuss. We would have things to discuss. The principal goal from the American point of view is to talk about how to denuclearize uh, the peninsula and end the North's uh, nuclear weapons program. They will have other things that they will want to discuss, principally, I think, under the general heading of how can the security of the regime in North Korea uh, be secured. I hope those kinds of discussions are taking place still. Between, uh, between Washington and Pyongyang through, through other channels, and that uh, Director Pompeo's visit wasn't a one-off, but it seems to have gone reasonably well from what one sees in the press. Ambassador, you mentioned about uh, one of the things that are uh, on the table, denuclearizing uh, the North Korean uh, you know, uh, arsenal here. Now, how are we going to verify that, right? I mean, uh, it, it's one thing to, to tease it, to say that it's on the table, even to go ahead and promise it. It's quite another thing to do it. His father hoodwinked us, his grandfather hoodwinked us. So there's a history of hoodwinking going on. So how do we make sure um, they're honoring whatever they commit to? Uh, that will be a very, very important question if we ever get that far in the discussion. Um, well, you have doubts about whether we'll even get that far in, in those initial talks. It's going to, this is not going to be a, a one-off walk into the room and have a chat for two hours and walk out and a, and a deal is done. Yeah, um, that's interesting, Ambassador. How long do you think this would go? I mean, uh, with the first Kennedy-Khrushchev meeting went over the series of a couple of days, uh, how would this go? Uh, I, I don't know, yeah. um, but if they, that will be part of the, of the lead up to the meeting is what is the actual expected outcome. If the expected outcome is to say, okay, we've agreed on two or three goals we want to address, and now we're going to have a longer, detailed discussion between delegations, that's one thing. If there's a broader agenda, it's, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to reach agreement. Um, the, the Kim regime and Mr. Kim are ruthless. Uh, they have a very clear idea of what their goals and objectives are, and I think they will press their they defend themselves very forcefully in the discussion. So it's, it's 
it's unclear what that uh, time frame would be, but it will be very difficult. All right, we'll watch closely. Ambassador, you bring a good deal of just cool-headed, uh, you know, realism to this. Don't go into it just giddy and all of that. Uh, thank you, sir. Very good seeing you. Thank you. Good to be here.